Hey guys, what's up? This is C1 or Joshua here bringing you the first video for our weekly series of Tutorial Tuesdays. We're going to be basically recording ourselves, showing you guys some nifty little tips and tricks in Cinema 4D and Photoshop that we find useful. They could be time saving tips and render improving tips, overlays, CC, whatever we feel like doing. We're probably going to switch off on doing these. Um, I might take it over, or John might take it over. He's more experienced than me, so he might actually end up doing most of these. But uh, I figured today I'd like to show you guys how to do color corrections in Cinema 4D. Um, I'd first off like to say that I did try to get my Turtle Beach headset to uh, configure to my laptop, but it didn't work too well. So I'm basically getting recorded by the uh, external mic on my laptop, so I'm sorry if you can hear me typing or clicking my mouse. I did try. Hopefully we'll be able to uh, get some more money and buy maybe a snowball mic or something that'll maybe work a little bit better than an external mic on a two-year-old laptop. So I open up Cinema 4D. I have a new Lightroom. I'm going to create a cube object to just be able to click and click on cube. We're going to create a quick little red material. So material, uh, click the little color box and drag it all the way to the right top of your color palette. I'm not going to mess with the settings at all because that takes time. I'm going to drag on our red material onto the cube and click on the render settings tab. Um, it's in the middle of your taskbar and it has the uh, gear behind it. So you have output, save, multi-passing, anti-aliasing, options, and stereoscopic. And you don't see color correction on there. Well, the way to get color correction is click on effect and then click on color correction. And this brings up the options to mess with saturation, brightness, contrast, exposure, gamma, and then you have red, green, and blue check marks. You have an invert check mark and black point and white point. Um, you don't need to worry about black point and white point as long as and as well as the uh, red, green, and blue checkpoints. You don't really want to mess with those. Um, invert can be kind of cool, which I'll show you guys that right now. I click the invert and I'll end up with a blue cube and a white background, which is the opposite if I was to render without um, invert. Now it's a red cube and a black background. So invert, that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, so first we're going to mess with saturation. If you bring saturation all the way up, it saturates your colors, no dip, you know, that's pretty simple. It just it adds more color to your colors. That's basically the best way to describe it. Um, you need to use it in moderation. Too much saturation can look really bad. And then if you bring saturation to a very extreme negative value, you end up graying out your whole render. <sighs> so hit reset values for the sake of this tutorial. Um, brightness, brightness. If you bring it to a extreme positive value, it will make your screen white. Um, it basically adds an uh, element of light to your render. And if you bring it all the way down to an extreme negative value, you will end up with a black render, and you won't be able to see anything. Um, contrast, it adds almost a definition, a high quality definition like to your render. If you have um, more than a cube, if you have some shadows in there and some more um, shading and stuff on your renders, contrast could really help you out, bring out some of that uh, shadows and stuff. It's really useful sometimes. Then if you bring contrast all the way down, Oh, excuse me. It grays everything out. Oh, sorry, it's not even light yet, and I'm already yawning. So next, we're gonna look at exposure. If you bring exposure all the way up, it will make it makes a really nasty looking um white quality, and it makes your renders look really harsh and disgusting. Um, you gotta use it in extreme moderation, so you don't want a lot at all. But then if you bring it to an extreme negative value, your render will end up being black. There's, you know, it adds positive, it adds white, negative, it adds black. 
Um, and then Gamma, the best way I can really describe what Gamma does is if you bring it all the way up, it mellows out your color depending on where your lights are. So as you can see, only the one side is uh, like a pinkish salmon -y color, and the other two, they're, uh, they're more harsh. There isn't any uh, shading at all, really. That's what Gamma does. You really don't want to mess with that setting at all. Um, if used correctly, all these settings, they can bring you one kick-ass Lightroom, like what we have, which people are still trying to figure out. It's beyond me, be why people try to, but, you know, it's not my uh, thing to say. Um, yeah, if used correctly, you know, it can bring you a really nice Lightroom. If not, you can just uh, use them on an already existing Lightroom. To bring out colors or contrast and whatever else you want to add to your Lightroom, that way you don't have to mess with it too much in Photoshop. Or if you want, if you're a intro maker or you do visual motion design, you can definitely use these tools to help set up your Lightroom and help record your, um, you know, your uh, intros or movies, whatever you do. Uh, it's pretty helpful. It helps us out. And yeah, expect more tutorials soon. Thank you guys for almost, um, we almost had 3,000 subscribers. That's really crazy. And we're doing an IRL, uh, twin IRL. We might do some corny stuff in there. Um, maybe try to play it off that we're conjoined or something. That would be kind of funny. But, um, yeah, thank you guys a lot for reviewing this. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe if it helped you out. If you didn't know what color correction was in Cinema 4D, I hope that it helped you out. And thank you very much. Have a great day, evening, night, morning, whatever time it is that you're watching this.